We're here in Hong Kong with Elizabeth Rossiello, the founder and CEO of AZA, formerly known as Vitpesa. Elizabeth, great to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's what I want to talk about, you know, the problem of cross-border payments in emerging markets, especially Africa. And from your perspective, how do you think cryptocurrencies could help solve this problem that we have today. Sure. Well, as you may or may not know, at African continent, the price and the cost of cross-border payments is actually two to three times what it is in Southeast Asia or South America. And you see lots of infrastructure, lots of development financing being financed in US dollars, yep. as opposed to India, where it'll be financed in local currency yep. or Southeast Asia or South America. So we have a very unique problem on the African continent in that the legacy infrastructure is still difficult and the cost and the friction is still so very high. High. And then finally, of course, as Christine Lagarde said when she was at the IMF, um, there's an issue of de-risking. So a lot of countries, and now even a lot of, uh, not even just corporates, but even fintechs are saying, you know, it, if we have to choose, Africa is too risky for us, and they're just cutting off the continent. So we're left almost like a gigantic island of 54 countries cut off from the rest of the, the world. So what crypto has done is really lowered the barrier to entry. Now anybody can start a business like I did on my living room floor six years ago to connect to the rest of the world. So when we first got started, I only had bank accounts really in Kenya and my legacy bank account in the United States, and I would trade between dollars and Kenyan shillings. And then I got introduced to Bitcoin and I met Bitcoin exchanges around the world and those founders helped me process payments into Asia, South America, into Europe, into the UK, into South Africa. Yep. And suddenly I realized this was a way to connect to brokers around the world. And as I've grown my business, that ability to kind of have a parallel system, also using compliance, KYC, I mean, it's not the dark web. Yep. Um, we still make sure we know who our customers are and what they're doing, but it's really given us the chance, the opportunity to participate. So participate, reduce costs, and actually enables you to actually do what you couldn't do previously. Why exactly, didn't it yeah, cost? feasibility. And what do you think, Elizabeth, on uh, Libra? Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Facebook's Libra, and yeah. obviously they're focused on emerging markets yeah. and making, you know, sending money as easy as sending an email or sending a WhatsApp payment. What's your view on this? I mean, you what's the impact Libra will have? Uh, and second, what impact can it have in a continent like Africa? Sure, well, I mean, you know business. Having a good brand is so important. Yeah. It creates trust. It helps users with usability and understanding. It helps break down barriers of trying something new. So just that the, one of the largest brands in the world yep. that's known at every level from the, the biggest companies to the smallest users, that well known and recognized, that is huge for the industry. And the fact that Libra is being talked about at every level, including the G7, and we're seeing the, the governor of the Bank of England discuss it, just shows you how strong that brand influence is. And there have been peaks and cycles in crypto over the last decade, yep. but you really see when big brands get involved, the conversation comes to the place where everybody's talking about it. So that alone has just been huge for the industry. Now, I think they've had a little bit of a rocky start in figuring out the governance, yep. which of course is something new. It's a new industry. We have a lot of uh, permissionless uh, crypto currencies and blockchains, ones like Bitcoin and Litecoin, where you might not know who's in charge. Yep. Might be a group of developers out of New York. It might be communities that meet only online. We have some digital bank currencies coming out, like those that have been trialed here in Bermuda. Yep and elsewhere. This is the first really kind of corporate or non-government coin that's gotten so much attention. We've had some stable coins, et cetera, but yep. I think it's interesting as becoming like the new third asset class, or like the third category of cryptocurrencies, which is not a government, not a group of developers, but actually a known entity issuing something with a group of its friends as they have the consortium and figuring out how this governance will work. So what do you think actually on central bank digital currencies? I mean, do you think countries in Africa and other emerging markets should consider issuing their own cryptocurrency? I mean, I think they're inevitable. Yep. Now, whether every country will issue them or just the largest countries will issue them, I think we're seeing some very interesting noise come out of China about this very topic, yep. which is so interesting because just two years ago, you thought the opposite would happen. So it shows you how, how fast the space is evolving. Absolutely. I think what it would do is give give the chance of a lot of um, domestic and sovereign currencies to be more frictionless, like I said. If it's difficult to open a bank account with Ugandan shilling, you yep. can only do it in Uganda. Yep. But if they issued a digital coin, maybe you could hold 
hold that currency in, all around the world. And you know, you might say, well, why would I hold Ugandan shilling? There's a lot of Ugandans abroad, and there's a lot of Ugandans in Kenya now. Now, if we move that to a company, country like Ethiopia yep. or Morocco or Egypt, where the diaspora is global and there's a lot of trade internationally, that suddenly becomes even more interesting. So you wouldn't actually happen to open up an Ethiopian bank account in Addis Ababa to actually hold that currency, but you could hold beer all over the world. Yeah, exactly. I think that's an exciting opportunity. And to finish off, Elizabeth, if you had one message to policymakers around the world, especially those in emerging markets or Africa, what would that message be? Don't close your ears to this <laughs> idea. This is happening in some ways. Yep. Just because you yourself are not using it to buy your coffee doesn't mean there's not a use case. I think we've really mixed up the idea of what this technology can offer and the, the personal P2P retail idea of it. So even though you're not paying for your Starbucks and cryptocurrencies and you don't see why you would, doesn't mean the technology can't be used to modernize, uh, reduce friction, and include um, more players into the international monetary system. Which is very exciting. Elizabeth, yeah, thank you very thanks much. So thanks much. for being on the show. Thank you.